After a blue soft tube comes out from the old pipe, it can extend the service life by 30 years. This is a lining repair technique. No need to dig the ground, create a new pipe inside the existing pipe. Initially, after determining the length of the pipe to be repaired, first pour the blue glue into the corrosion-resistant soft tube, then use a roller to press once to make the glue evenly coat the inner surface of the soft tube. After completing this step, the worker will wind the soft tube into this machine, use the blower to blow the head of the soft tube out, then flip the soft tube onto the outlet, use a steel ring to fix it, then add a small section of transition pipe. It mainly plays the role of connecting the soft tube. Next, extend the transition pipe into the old pipe, then restart the blower, blow the soft tube from the transition pipe into the old pipe. At this time, the soft tube is blown out in a flipped direction. Due to the existence of glue, the inflated soft tube will naturally stick to the inner wall of the old pipe during the continuous advancement. Finally, the soft tube will drill out from the outlet. After completing this step, the worker will also use ultraviolet light to accelerate the curing of the glue. Ensure the soft tube is firmly stuck inside. In this way, a new pipe has been installed. Have you understood this cost-saving pipe repair method? After selecting the well location, a drill rod is used to lower the drill bit. This step is also known as hole drilling. The drill bit is made from hard alloy and has a small hole. The drilling fluid will go through the hollow drill rod and reach the drill bit, then it will spray out from the small hole, main light to lubricate and cool the drill bit. In addition, the soil and rocks broken by the drill bit will also be carried out by the drilling fluid. A drill rod is about 5 meters long. When the first drill rod is inserted into the ground, a second drill rod needs to be added. They are connected by threads. After screwing them together, continue drilling down. At the same time, to prevent the collapse of the borehole, workers will insert a casing to protect the borehole. The diameter of the casing must be slightly larger than the drill rod, which allows the drill rod along with the drill bit to continue drilling down. If the drill rod is not long enough, just keep adding. Keep itting and drilling down until you reach the water source. Then, the scene you see at the beginning will appear. A large amount of water will gush up from the ground due to the pressure deference. So, do you understand now? You've never seen the installation of road heating for highways, have you? You only see workers installing electric cable rolls on the road base, then they cover it with a thick layer of mixture. What kind of innovative activity is this? Actually, this is a common practice in road construction in Canada, because most areas of Canada are in the cold region. The climate is cold and snow covered all year round. Therefore, the phenomenon of road freezing often occurs. This leads to the collapse of the transportation system. So, they have researched electric heating technology to melt snow. It can effectively prevent the phenomenon of snow and freezing on the road. Before installation, the road base must be prepared. Then, according to the drawing, install the heating cable. After that, cover it with a thick layer of material. An electric heating road has been installed. When the snowfall season comes, people can manually control the line switch. When the switch is turned on, the bottom heating cable will continuously emit heat. Through the road surface as a radiator, it makes the road surface temperature continuously increase. From there, it melts the snow and ice on the road. The thick insulation layer outside the heating cable, even if the road is damaged can ensure maximum safety. Its lifespan can reach 50 years. In addition, in areas with abundant groundwater, this water spray device will also be installed on the road. Because the groundwater temperature is stable at about 13 degrees all year round, therefore using the temperature difference to melt the snow on the road. This water spray device is equipped with an automatic sensor switch. When the temperature drops below zero or there is snow on the road, the switch will automatically turn on and spray groundwater. So, isn't such a method of removing snow on the road very magical? So the question is, how does your living area usually remove snow? With just a gentle push, a concrete mat will roll down from the slope, its surface filled with tightly packed concrete blocks. If you lay and fix this mat and use it as a cushion, it can effectively resist the erosion of the water flow. You need to know that if you only use soil to build a dam, it will be eroded by the water flow in a short time. The river will gradually extend to the land, and in severe cases, a dam break will occur. To prevent this situation, the quick concrete mat was invented. A standardized mat is 10 meters long and 2 meters wide. The bottom of the mat is a geo technical fabric, the middle layer is a geotechnical grid, and they are firmly adhered together by the quick concrete on the top. These three materials combined can be said to be both soft and hard, soft enough to roll them into a roll, but once it is laid, it can resist the erosion of the water flow for decades or even hundreds of years, not only ensuring quality but also low construction costs. Before laying, use a leveling machine to level the soil. After completing this step, the rest is left to the excavator. It will first hang the rolled quick concrete 
concrete mat to the designated position. If there is a slope, just release the mat. If there is no slope, use a shovel to open it bit by bit. During this process, workers will use an electric saw to cut off the excess part. Using this method to build a dam, you no longer have to fear the erosion of the water flow. So what method does your area use? If we talk about pesticide spraying, no one can compare with it. On a swaying column, there are a total of 18 spray heads. This is equivalent to replacing 18 workers. Because of the swaying design, it can spray pesticides at 360 degrees without dead angles. Moving along the aisle between the fruit trees, it sprays two rows of fruit trees at once. The back of the driving style is a storage tank, which can hold thousand liters of pesticide. It's worth noting that the 18 spray heads don't always have to be fully opened. You can adjust according to the height of the fruit trees you spray for slightly shorter fruit trees, just open a few spray heads at the bottom. If you feel this machine is still not efficient enough, then you will switch to a drone. Based on the area of the crops after programming, the drone will automatically divide into grid-like work routes. Then start the drone, open the spray head under the propeller. The sprayed pesticide will be blown by the wind generated by the propeller so that the physical pesticide is evenly sprinkled on the vegetation. And the amount of pesticide for each plant will be strictly controlled just right. Not only that, during the flight, the sensor of the drone will check the obstacles in front in real time. Once it encounters a power pole, it will automatically avoid it. The whole process is automatic. Do you find it interesting? The fish are swimming in a pipe with a diameter of 30 semanitir. A high-powered water pump will transfer them from this fish pond to a new one, tens or even hundreds of meters away. There's no need to pump out all the water in the pond, then catch the fish one by one. This method doesn't even require pouring water into the new fish pond. The fish, along with the water, will be transferred to their new home. Interestingly, to help fish overcome dams tens of meters high to complete the breeding process, a type of pipe has been researched. The fish will be stuffed into the pipe like shooting marbles in a bubble shooting game. Thanks to the suction design, the fish will be sucked in and move forward in the pipe, overcoming high mountains to reach new water sources. The pump can move from 5 to 8 meters. Although it needs to transport one fish at a time, it is certainly better than the traditional method that causes a lot of disruption. Moreover, this method of transporting fish with a water pump is simpler and faster, and there is no need to worry about hurting the fish. The name of the pump is a centrifugal spiral pump. It uses a large angle spiral fan. The circulation space is very large. From from the moment the fish enter until they leave, it's like they've gone through a maze, turn around and they're out. Of course, the larger the pump, the higher the transport efficiency, and the size of the fish that can be transported is also larger. Currently, the method of transporting fish with a water pump is widely applied in the field of large-scale aquaculture. There are no big waves, but the stern of the ship can create a 10-meter high wave in an instant. At the same time, the speed of the ship also decreases rapidly. This is the scene when the ship is breaking. The usual wave moments occur at the front of the ship. The stern only shows small waves caused by the rotation of the propeller. In fact, the big wave at the beginning of the video is also caused by the propeller. This is one of the braking methods of the ship, the method of reversing the propeller. The propeller of the ship is like the tires of a car. When the car breaks, the tires will stop rotating, relying on friction to force the car to stop. But the propeller is different. Its friction in the water is very small. After stopping rotation, it cannot break in a short time. So they let the propeller rotate in reverse. It. The propeller that was rotating in the forward direction suddenly rotates in reverse and the ship feels like it is reversing. At that time, the propeller will create a lot of bubbles under the water. Sometimes it can fill the back deck. Sometimes you can see two types of waves with opposite directions hitting each other on one side of the ship. But this is not enough. The sailor must also put the emergency anchor into the seabed, trying to resist the forward momentum of the ship. In addition, the helmsman will rotate the direction in an orderly manner, allowing the hull to slide on the wader in a swaying posture. This can increase the resistance of the ship, ultimately achieving the effect of braking. Do you find the work of the ship's sailor interesting? When you press the button, an empty iron shell will fall into the water, and within five seconds, it will open up and transform into a floating bridge. If you release two more iron shells and assemble them together, you can construct a temporary ferry that easily transports a 10-ton truck across the river. On a wide water surface, it becomes a ferry, while on a narrow waterway, it turns into a floating bridge, speeding up the river crossing process. The operating principle is quite simple. An empty hollow iron shell is folded into four sections, connected by steel cables in the middle. 
metal. The specialized transport vehicle has a large hook. Before releasing it into the water, the hook keeps the steel cable taut, ensuring the iron shell remains closed. When released into the water, the hook opens, the steel cable extends, and the original four sections of the iron shell unfold, floating on the water's surface. Therefore, retrieval is also convenient. Simply control the hook to reconnect the steel cable, and the iron shell will automatically retract. Additionally, constructing a floating bridge in the water requires human intervention. Two bridge sections are brought together using ropes, aligned, and secured with screws. Since the floating bridge has no independent power, two high-powered rubber boats are needed to connect them. In this way, a temporary ferry is built, shuttling between the riverbanks and facilitating the rapid crossing of heavy vehicles. Isn't it fascinating? This is a miraculous pair of scissors. It can cut windshield glass as if it were paper. That's one of the features of these glass cutting scissors. By turning the handle, you can change the cutting direction. It was specifically invented for car accident rescue. The most important thing is these scissors can fit any brand of drill. Once connected, you just need to pull the drill trigger. The rotating drill head will make the scissor head move up and down. In the event of a car accident, firefeeders don't need to smash the glass for cephaly. They just need to control this powerful seesaw heed, then they can start cutting. Because the scissors cut from the inside out, the glass pieces will not fall into the car. This helps to minimize injuries to the trapped person. Moreover, if a car accident causes severe deformation of the car and the trapped person cannot be rescued from the windshield position, it must be replaced with a larger pair of pliers. Turning the handle clockwise, it can cut through steel. Turning counterclockwise, it can open car doors. For deformed cars, cut what needs to be cut, open what needs to be opened, helping to speed up the rescue process. Not only that, in the event of an earthquake, it is a valuable rescue device. Inserted into the gap of the rock, it can widen the rock above, convenient for firefighters to rescue trapped people. So, which of these two devices do you think is more useful? Without any mechanical assistance, one can climb up from a two meter deep water ditch. The whole body has a total of seven controllable parts. In addition to four wheels that can rotate 180 degrees and a digging bucket, it also has two extendable support legs. After extending the support legs and controlling the digging bucket to brace against the ground, all four wheels can leave the ground at the same time. Once fully extended, the space at the bottom can allow two cars to pass at the same time. It is an excavator, but its biggest strength is not its digging ability, but its climbing ability. In just a few minutes, it can climb up to a four meter high platform. Because of this, it can reach places that ordinary excavators cannot. Control the front wheels to descend to the riverbed while the rear wheels remain on the bridge surface. Maintain an inclined angle to carry out the digging work. All components are hydraulically driven. Like a large spider, it can firmly lie on the steep cliff. However, no matter how high it climbs, it cannot work on a cooling tower 162 meters high. For this special task, the demolition team can only replace the excavator's wheels with two giant rollers and four mechanical arms. A set of elevators has been set up in advance. After sending the excavator up, the mechanical arms will firmly clamp the tower body. Use the rollers to move the excavator and then slowly carry out the demolition work. Imagine for a moment how much salary would they pay you to dare to take on such a job. 